I showed you just a quick clip. I wanted to get you uh, a clip of me using a, like a pump concept that I kind of created off of the um, stick stick and nod play that's in Madden. I just wanted to show it to you. Remember that when you run your DAG and your dig concepts and your all of the in concepts that we're working to start the game, use that as your first change up. Use some of those little plays in there and see if it works for you. And then you can go to other concepts as you move along. Um, like Indiana and everything else, but that's something else to just don't forget. That's part of the scheme. All right. Book that I have right now has been updated. Um, that book is going to be found on the PS5 share. Um, it's called Tom Moore, and I have the date updated, I think, as of yesterday. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump onto the uh, system and for the guys in the Xbox can take a look at it right now. And then while I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about tempo, all right, and kind of give you some ideas of the reason why the book and the way, the reason why it's set up the way it is, um, and also the style that I'm trying to use to mimic kind of like the, as they call muddle huddle. So it's no huddle, but not really with, you know, they're not going fast, but they try to keep the same personnel on the field. I'm going to try to mimic that in a sim way without being overly annoying, but it's going to put pressure on your opponent to pick plays okay so uh, i've been working on that for the past week it's been working out pretty well so let's jump over into madden and let's take a look at the new playbook and um, the updated playbook i should say and the tempo okay okay so we're here in madden field the uh the new playbook is there you guys can go check it out i'm just going to go through each formation so you can take a look at it and i'll talk about things as we come as we go uh, don't forget that these guys actually did use pro sets. Um, they did use them when they're backed up or sometimes in the goal line. Okay, so this is what I've seen so far. On tape, I've actually saw something that was actually twins or slot formation, I formation slot, but we're keeping it pretty simple here. You can see the run game. I'll talk about that more later, but we're focusing more on stretch and really trap plays as much as we can. We don't want to overdo it with trap, but that's the I formation. Uh, single back, big part of what we do. Wing, wing pair is in my playbook, guys, so you don't have to... Well, I forgot exactly what playbook I used. I got to go find that out for you guys, too. I'll put it in the description below after the video is made. Um, ah, I think it might have been the Raiders or the Giants, one of those two. But anyway, wing pair was one of the formations that I had to keep in there, right? And then the next one was wing trips. I mean, why trips? And then the rest of the book was open for me to do whatever I wanted with. So I think you have to start with that playbook. Okay, so take a look at this going through. So why trips is big for us. Um, and the reason why is because usually when I'm on the left hash, I like to be in trips formation. When you watch them play, they would take like a formation like wide die, uh, single back dice slot and they would flip the formation. So the tight end and the slot receiver would change and the outside receivers would stay the same. They would do that, depending on what match they were on. And they always really put the formation into the field. They hardly ever did boundary formation. So that's pretty much what it is. But in the Madden world, what I'm going to do to simulate that is when I'm on the left hash, I'm primarily going to be in wide trips or some sort of trips formation where it's to the right of the field. Over here, this is a trips formation where it's on the, on the opposite side. So this would be more of a right hash formation, okay? When, it's, when ace is the one formation that I have that you will see me using on any hatch because it's obviously a symmetrical formation, so it doesn't matter. But this is a big formation for me, okay? And at the end of this, guys, you can add in more ace slots or some other ace pairs, things like that that you might like. Um, 
wing slot. You know, they use they dabbled in that stuff as well, especially in red zone situations. Uh, you can use any formation you really want out of this playbook. I'm just trying to keep it very classic for me right now because I have so many good plays. Right now, the playbook has, I forgot how many formations it has. I think it only has like 20 something formations, 25 or so. And then it has 250 plays. Okay, so that's low on the number of plays that usually I have. I usually am up there in the 400 range. Okay, so. But um, Pistol is another way for me to get into some of the plays that I like. The pin and pull plays, those are big for me. All right, I like those plays, and they really kind of come out of Pistol formation a lot. So we have these three formations to start right now. And as you see, as I go through the book, I'm going to tell you really more in the next video how it's organized. Um, it's really organized well by plays at the top of the book, at the top of each formation, plays that I'm going to pick very quickly. Okay, so as I call a formation like halfback doubles week, these three plays are ones I'm going to pick. Um, I'm going to just go with them and just line up. And then once you go down into the playbook here, once you get into the second and third column, these are plays that I actually have as audibles. So let's take a look at why trips is probably one of the exceptions. Let me not really focus on this one. There's a lot of lines here. First line, the second line. These are picks, plays I'm going to pick for situations. And even some of the third line, I'm going to pick the situations. As we get towards the bottom, these are some of the audible plays. And I'll explain that more when we get to the next video, how the audibles are set up. But they are set up in order to try to beat certain coverages or coverage looks, okay? All right, so doubles offset. So like here, first play inside zone is a play that I would just come out and, you know, and just call it quickly. And then as I'm out there, I'll take a look at the defense. And we have a system and way of doing this right now that I'll take a look to see, you know, what play I'm going to pick out of these audibles, okay? So as you go through the book here, the first couple of plays are usually plays, again, I'll pick quickly, get myself out there, I'll run it if I like it. If I don't, you're going to see me check, check into, like, the plays that are pretty much the last four or five plays of each formation, okay? So you can see also I've kind of gotten away from having to have close formations. I was really kind of stuck on that in the beginning of this book. Uh, but with the ability to motion guys, uh, slot receivers outside to bring in the outside receiver, it really wasn't that serious. Okay. So, but as you see, though, as I go through the book, you're going to see two by two formations, two by two formations, which are mostly going to be on the right hash. Okay. The only exception I will do, and this is kind of a tip for if you ever, if you ever play me, you can kind of get a little bit of a tell if you're even paying attention to this, is that if I'm in a two by two formation and it's flipped, so let's say I want to run RPO bubble alert, right? Let me come out. Let me put myself in some situations here. I'm sorry to stop the video for guys in the Xbox. You have to go back to it, okay? But if I ever come out, right, I would not usually come out in this type of formation here. I would not come out in this two by two and have the, have the receiver in the boundary. I really don't plan on it. If I do it by accident, I'll probably just motion to a three by one set, all right? But if you ever see me come out, if, I, if I'm picking plays quickly, I'm in that formation group, right? I will flip this formation to run the ball, okay? Or to run an RPO. So I'm okay with using two by two formations on the left hash, but most of the time, the tendency is going to be for me to run the ball. The reason why is I don't want to start getting into having plays like this one, a classic Indiana concept, and my buttons are different in my progression of reading. I want to get so good at the offense and I always want to have my Indiana concept being the, the traditional way where my first read is going to be coming from left to right here, right? So this is to be, this is to be basically the way I would run this concept from this formation, right? If I call that same play, right? It's going to be Harrison coming in first, right? That's, that's square. If I flip this, obviously it's going to be circle. So I don't, you know, I'm kind of worried about that. I'm kind of, I'm going to be a little bit of a stickler on that. Uh, obviously, the inside guys don't change. The triangle is triangle. Um, that each is X, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, that stays the same. But still, it's coming from the opposite side. So as we go through these plays, I'm trying to get muscle memory of really kind of my reads. And I've had mistakes already where I've motioned the guy, and I I think I talked about that in one of my videos, you know? But anyway, so let's just continue on. Um, you're going to see that it's a little bit of a tendency there. I'll probably, if anybody, I'd... If anybody I see that catches on to that in my leagues, I'll just change it. I'll just come up with something different. All right, so we have normal Y off. That's where I am, right? So these plays here, 
And you can see it really aren't too much, right? I have a little bit more in tray open, okay? And a lot of runs here, I like to, you know, quickly pick to start. I have some pass plays here that I would quickly pick within towards the bottom, okay? And I'll show you the audibles as we go through. Uh, I'm gonna go back and look at the actual audible page so you guys can go look at it quickly. I'm gonna do that right after this. Empty flex space. This is gonna be more of a third down call, red zone call, situational two minute call. Okay, but you can see the concepts that are there. I'm not gonna talk about all of them until we actually have to talk about them in each section of this video. Split offset is more of a two minute, uh, two minute, but it's more of a third long call. They used to use this a lot. I will actually sub in if a good tight end. I'll put him in the slot receiver spot. All right, so I just like this formation for some of the routes we have. We're actually gonna talk about this formation today. Double flex weak max. It's going to be a formation where we're going to have motion. Again, third down. You get a team that plays a lot of two man, a lot of man coverage. You do have some formations where they did motion. Same thing with box. Everybody knows the box formation. Same thing. It allows you to have motion in your offense a little bit. So as I go back and I watch more games from back in the day, you know, third down was a time for them to definitely do whatever it took to get off the field. I mean, to stay on the field, I'm sorry. So they would use motion for obvious two-man teams, okay? All right, so I think that's it. I mean, that's a pretty easy playbook, right? I went through all the plays. Like I said, I think it's only 20-something plays, all right? And I'll meet you on the other side where we can go look at the um, audibles for each formation, okay? And then we'll come back and start the videos, talk about the run game. Okay, here go the audibles. Okay, that's it. So hope you Xbox guys can use that. Uh, I cannot find right now at this moment the format, the playbook I started with. Apologize about that. It started with Y trips and it started with the wing pair, these two. So started with wing pair first, ace trips or Y trips. And then from there, I built out the rest of the book. Okay. All right. So let's get back on the matter field. Let's take a look at some run concepts. Okay, so let's quickly get into the run game. Okay, the one good thing about this offense is if somebody really is confusing you on defense with their coverages, or they are just really coming out in light personnel defenses, like they're not matching your defense, they're coming out in dime, dollar versus 12 personnel, then run the ball. I mean, this offense always had Edron James, uh, Adai, and running backs who were a main part of the offense, um, not just in pass catching, but at Marshall Falk in the beginning stages um, of the Indy offense. You know, um, Barry Sanders ran in this offense. You know, so your running back is important. Um, I'm not going to make him the highest priority in Madden. I think you can get away with a guy who's probably about 80 overall, as long as he has good speed. If he doesn't have good speed, you can still use a guy that's 88 speed. You just have to look to come back a lot okay but the main thing is the stretch play all right so this is different than like the wide zone play where you're basically trying to aim to run for the numbers okay aiming for the outside leg of the tight end whoever's there and you're trying to get outside I'm only cutting it back if you can't all right so there's some there's times where i run into uh some situations where i should have cut it back sooner but this isn't necessarily like a bend back run okay it's like we're trying to really get to the edge of the defense it is the true stretch play, okay? And Howard Mudd, a famous Hall of Fame offensive line coach, um, you know, was the coordinator of this thing, and he did a nice job with it, okay? So you're going to get stretched as the number one run concept pretty much in every formation, 
All right. It's going to be really big for under center. All right. I think that's where you're really going to like it. Five back. I'm sorry. A single back ace. You know, I do have some guns. I'm not highly, highly, uh, really for this. I kind of run this when the opponent that I'm playing has an inside stuff player. And I just can't run inside zone as much as I like. All right. So that's where we're at. Okay. So it's going to be pretty much in every formation. It's one of those plays that it's going to be at the top of the, uh, formation, um, collection when you go through your plays. Now, inside zone is the complement to outside zone. Okay. Something that they would run. I would think, you know, the next complement, once pit teams are really trying to overly overcommit, then we can run inside zone. I believe running inside zone is important from the Madden standpoint early in games. I'll go into strategy more, maybe in the Patreon community, but really, the strategy for me personally is just to get people to really have to try to make sure they stop the inside run, okay? And that's going to set up a lot of the play action later on, all right? So that's the general idea of it. So, and a lot of good, there are a lot of good inside zone run plays, especially out of the gun, you know, that are there for you. So make sure you know what level you play on. If you play on um, all Madden, there's a great chance that, you know, if a team matches the personnel, that the adaptive AI is going to kick in. So make sure you're aware of that. now. The power plays here are probably, I need to edit some of these. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to really probably focus on the duo play. I think that's the play that they ran the most if it was a power play. So duo is power blocking, okay? All power blocking, but you don't have the pulling guard, okay? As the kickout player. So really think of it to be the same way. But I do have some plays where I'm pulling guys. Um, halfback power G is a little bit of a different type of design. That's more realistic to what I'm trying to get to. But you're going to see me run the duo more. And sometimes I do, you know, if certain leagues, I have to be a little bit different. But I will run power after I run a good number of traps because then I think everybody's going to just try to fit inside. And then you can kind of take this off a B gap, C maybe even, you know, not really designed to do that so much. But you're not trying to bounce the power, but you can kind of get people to think, think in the fit inside all the time. And then you can fit outside. Okay. So I do like it out of gun probably the most. There's some good little runs there, like out of the uh, gun trips tight end formation. It's a pretty good deal. Okay, so start there. Then we have the next most, my probably my next most favorite play is the pin and pull sweep play this year. This is a really neat play. Um, if you guys don't know, the pin and pull sweep is combination hybrid of zone and, and really kind of gap scheme. Gap scheme because you have the pullers. But zone scheme, because what it is, is if they're, if you're, if you have a guy that's uncovered, he's going to pull. All right. So let me just show you an example. Let me try to get some random fronts here if I can. Uh, hold on one second. Random four, three should give you some different looks. So all the, all the players here that are actually uncovered, there's not a person on them are going to pull. So the right tackle is going to pull, the center should pull. And I think that's it. We're going to the right here. Actually, the guard pulled there. In theory, that's what it's supposed to be. All right, let's take a look at it going the other direction. Any offensive line guys out there, let me know if I'm wrong. In my theory, the, only the center should pull here. Okay, so the tackle pulled as well, maybe because there's a tight end next to him. All right, so I got to get a little more educated on that run. That's my fault. I thought the, the generic description was if you're covered, uncovered, you can go. So maybe it has something to do a little bit different for the tackle here. But the center is definitely not covered by anybody. That means there's no defensive lineman standing over him. So he would pull. The guard is covered. But the thing I like, this is really what you saw a lot of back in the day in Indy. They would run, basically, They back in the day, they called the stretch for pullers. I remember hearing from the Cool Clinic guys and watching film back in the day. It was really just the stretch run, like we you know it, but just having pullers. And it's kind of good versus certain defenses, okay? Um, defenses where you feel like you can't, that you your tight end can't really win on the edge, uh, maybe like a three four odd defense, right? And you want to get your guard, tackle pulling, and you can kind of maybe get that outside leverage uh, block that you want. All right, so that's that that play, outside zone and sweep are like my two favorite plays to run. They're like the most fun plays to run. Okay, um, trap is a big part of their offense. You can see I only have it five times in here because I'm not going to OD. I just feel like trap is one of the most overpowered plays. So I hope you guys, if you want to run this offense, don't run this 10 times a game, okay? Just mix it in like four times a game most, okay? It's one of those plays that just it works against the whole lot. Now, the one thing that really stops trap is people blitzing up the middle. People just being aggressive. Even double mug fronts work against trap plays. 
I had to find that out the hard way. One of the guys in my division runs trap a good amount. So I had to figure out how the hell do I stop this play from, so if you just sit back in a four, three and just sit there and play cover two, or, you know, even cover three, and it's just going to open up a lot of gaps inside. You got to be aggressive. You got to have some run blitzes to stop the trap. All right. Uh, counter, this is not a play that they run. It's only in there on one play, the misdirection zone play. That's how I look at that one. So that's not a true counter. Uh, in real life, draw was a big play for them. They actually use something called sprint draw, where the quarterback would look like he's about to run, like stretch, and then like it'd be a draw play. And then they had play action off of it. But in Madden, we don't have that. But it's just the draw play. I think draw is actually one of the better plays as well, especially since I have a feeling that most of us are going to not that pass a good amount in this offense because the passing game is so good. Now, if you do this a couple times a game, it will get people confused, okay? And so, not part of our deal right now. So, the main run concepts, outside zone, really sweep, and trap. And those are the big three. And then you can complement your game any way you want. I'll probably use inside zone as my complement because I do have some RPOs as well. Um, but if you want to go with duo as your complement, that's fine. If you're in a league where, you know, you're allowed to have a little flexibility, just run the power play every now and then. It kind of surprises them, all right? So off of these run plays, we'll talk about the play action setups because all these formations, especially like the under center formations, uh, ace formation is a good amount of play actions that we're going to talk about next. I'm going to show you the diagrams and then we'll come back here in the Madden field and take a look at them and that'll be the end of this thing. But we do have some nice play actions that are set up off of the under center plays. And there's a few in the gun that I like, like the one on the right, Peter close cross shot. So I'm going to explain those concepts to you from a passing standpoint, but you need to set them up a little bit. And to me, that's more, these plays are used as a surprise or as a change up more than some other offenses where like, that's the majority of your offense in Madden. Okay. This would be more of a, Hey, you know, they I'm going fast. I want to snap the ball, play action, let's get to throw the ball and we get going. All right. So let's take a look at some of the diagrams that I have from Adam Gase's playbook. Um, and we'll talk about the theories because they're really simple. It's going to be easy to find in Madden. You can find a bunch of these plays um, all over, littered in every single playbook. They're very generic pro-style passing concepts. Okay, let's jump into these play-action concepts. Now, these concepts don't have to be play-action all the time. You, they can be also um, just at a drop back. All right, but the very first one is the Denver concept. All right, let's go back. The Denver concept. So all this is is a high-low to me, okay? Um, I might not be teaching this exactly by the book, okay? But you get this high-low combination right here with the drag and with the deep in coming behind it, okay? So, and the way I read it is off of play action, okay? I'm looking to see if there's pressure, if there is pressure from anywhere or some sort of immediate, um, you know, somebody got beat with a block quickly. I'm looking to get the ball off to underneath right now. That's, to me, that's the hot route, all right? If not, I'm trying to see if I can get the, somebody in this window right here, usually between the hash, numbers and the hash, right? We're trying to get that throw, that deep dig route, hoping that a user or linebackers get sucked up and that this would be pretty much open. Now, the look that we're looking for is potentially some sort of cover three look, cover one look, post safety look, you know what I mean? Where you get these matchups on the outside where they're pretty much playing man-to-man, -man, even though they're playing zone, right? Once it gets past a certain point, they have to pretty much match up on that. And we're kind of hitting in that high intermediate zone right before it becomes deep, okay? But that's the look. And Tom Moore always talked about that. Try to make sure that you don't waste the play. Um, if you get cover four or you get cover two, maybe this is not the best play. But we do have a post alert here that this route could get open. There is a post there. And then Adam Gase has a wheel, which in Madden has a lot of wheels as well. So you could take a look at maybe like cover one or some sort of busted coverage, wheels open, type of alert as you're dropping back. But really the main part of this play is here and here, okay? And then late in the down, let's just say you took a look and it wasn't there, you can always come back to this underneath route. It'll be over over by the, uh, by the number, outside the numbers probably by now, but you can use that as a check down, okay? In some plays also the running back becomes a check down as well, all right? So that is the Denver concept. Some people call it the America's concept, the NCAA route. It's pretty much this, this, and this. Okay, and that's the route concept. You could do it out of non-play action as well on third down. You want to try to get a shot, but you also want to have some good check down answers. It's good for you there too, okay? Now let's take a look at the next one. The next one is called Florida, all right? So Florida in the game is actually called slot cross 
on Y cross, okay? So that's your number one option. Similar to the last route, you know, off of play action, I think it's best. If it's open, hit them right now. So again, you're gonna be somewhere around the hash mark to the numbers, all right? And you're looking for open grass. If there's open grass there, the open hole throws, as they call it on offense, take it, okay? Be careful though, if a user is coming underneath it and it's a safety, safeties can jump sometimes and make plays. But then you have number two option here is your big, which is there for you as well, okay? So one to two, all right? One to two. And then you have your check down now is your tight end that's gonna probably be going, uh, he's probably gonna be blocking and then check releasing, okay? So that by the timing of it, by the time he gets into his route, it'd be good to be served as a check down. All right. One bad thing about this play is if you do get immense pressure, right? It really isn't a great check down um, unless you can hit this guy early over the middle. So again, if you're going up against a team that has really good edge rushers and you know they win a lot against your O line, I would not really want to run this so much. Okay. Also, if you you're going up against a user that does a lot of baiting and then comes back and tries to come here, so you think it's covered and then he kind of follows your progression. The one thing I would do is just stay on this guy a little bit longer and wait for him to come off and then throw it to him out by like in between the hash and the, in between the sideline and the numbers. Hit it over here, okay? So just something there. You can also use this guy, you know, just get rid of the ball. You know, if you don't like all this stuff here, just get rid of it. Just don't turn this into a bad play, okay? So that's the two by two version is called Florida and the three by one version, probably my favorite way to do it is called um flounder okay so a lot of times you're going to have the tight end working across the field you might have to audible him to do that all right working as that underneath tech down drag guy you got the deep guy really your first read your second read and then come back down here for your third with your alert post against cover two okay if for some reason there's some playbooks that have like this guy doing like a triple move over here i would just put him on a go just so he clears out to give room for everything else but this isn't the same concept as going the other way. I, mean, I prefer it. I think a lot of people don't expect it from three by one, okay? And the last concept that I'm going to draw up on the board real quick is just really, we're looking at potentially um, going up against a team that wants to stack the box. And one formation that you'll probably be in in this situation would be ace, right? Single back ace. So if they stack the box against you, right, and they give you a whole bunch of guys up in there, safety walks down, right? You got your Will, you got your Mike, you got your Sam, right? You got your four down linemen. Just in general, now you're going to get what? Your corner, your safety here, whoever it is, free or strong, and your corner over here. Now we have chances to run what we would say, keep everybody in max protection and run deep shots across the field. So one of the ones that are in the game, all of these, two guys going out, right? And you get this deep shot. However, a lot of users kind of know that that's coming and they drop back in that area, okay? So the next thing that I'm gonna probably present to you is just falling comebacks, okay? And just trying to hit that ball 15 yards down the field against those corners, good to go. If the corners are playing press or they're in a cloud look of some sort, or they're playing in no man's land, just put these guys on goes instead. Okay, so just audible display, make it happen for you. Get the right look, take your shot every now and then as a nice little change up off of what you're doing. The best thing to me is that this is a good tempo play, meaning that you can just go up there and make your audibles and go. Like you don't have to read anything. It's a pretty easy look. You see, it's just a single high safety look. Just come on, let's go. You know, you don't have to really wait on it. Also versus quarters teams. You can use that versus quarters teams as well. It doesn't have to be against single safety. Quarters corners are responsible for any for anything that goes vertical. So without any safety help. So, you know, you're kind of getting the same idea. All right, let's jump on the field. Let's take a look at these plays on the Madden field and go from there. Okay, we're back on the field here and let's just start with the 505 plays. Those are pretty easy. So in the single back A's PA cross shot, you guys probably know about this. This is gonna be one of the easier plays to talk about. Um, you know, you get the over route, you get the big post route there. This is a good look against some sort of uh, single high defense. And obviously, you just want to hit this route on time. And obviously, throw to me, my fault. But um, this is the type of look you want. So it's just a whole throw. It's better, obviously, versus the computer. It's an easier throw versus the computer. I'm throwing that wrong. But against the um, against a user, this is going to be tough. 
for some time, you know, for some people that they're using a linebacker or whatever it is. So let's just say you don't like that look right now. I probably wouldn't do this to the left-hand side. I'll probably, you know, keep with the, uh, have the comeback on the right-hand side. It looks like it could be a cover two over there. Let's just go with a go. So you can just audible this into comebacks and goes and then go from there. Okay. And that's another option for you to use. And that's probably the primary way that I would use this to be safe. Okay. So you can take these routes and change them into whatever you want. But the best ways to me is just to go with the comebacks on both sides or the go on either side and go from there. My controllers are messed up. Hold on. Not great. Sometimes these things get stuck. There we go. So we're straight there. And just make that easy throw, okay? Comebacks is still one of the better routes in the game. Uh, works well against off coverage. All right, so that's one of your options that you have. Um, and then you can kind of add that to your book and have some different versions of it here. The one on the bottom left-hand corner is what more is, that's more of a double post concept. Um, we're not gonna talk about that right now. It's not really what we're looking for. Let's go find, actually out of under center, I know I have the flounder here that I like. Okay, so Flounder was one of the plays that I talked about. It's Florida just at a three by one, okay? So this has the running back to the flat already for you, so you don't have to worry about taking uh, the tight end across the field. You can leave him in there. But if you don't like the look, you can easily just, um, you know, go look for your check downs, throw the ball away if you don't like it. That was pretty tight coverage there, right? Now, you can also always alert, like I said, for your, um, for your post ball. If it's, if it's a cover two look, if you like the look and you think you can get it in there, that's fine. All right. So don't mind my execution right here. This should be pretty easy throw and catch. Uh, and then you have your dig as your number two option, which is going to be used more against the user where, you know, they do a good job of covering that first route. And then the backside route, you try to get it in there. Okay. That time the computer gave me a double, <laughs> double safety stitch in there and the uh, hooks. Okay. Uh, but don't forget about your check down. So. Don't waste the play. Don't take a sack and uh, get the ball out of your hands if you have to. Now, I do have some out of two by two, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go find it real quick. I think it's from the gun. I have one that I like. Yeah, out of this double hips play. And usually I come up here, man, and I'm just snapping and going. I get the look that I want. This isn't the best look. I think this is a blitz look, right? But I'm just getting rid of that ball on time. I was thinking I was going to throw it to the running, uh, to the to the tight end, to the flat if that blitz came clean, but he kind of got held up a little bit. There goes another blitz look. You know what I mean? So you might have to be, this one's a little bit of a slow play action. If you see a guy coming off the edge free, you might have to cancel out of the play action. I know even my league allows that. Um, so just be ready for that. This is something I would definitely practice. Make sure that you feel good about it. All right. You don't want to make this uh a negative, it's a big shot, but just make sure you minimize your uh, penalties and don't get caught up trying to, to force the ball, okay? And that's the big thing about it. So those are two examples. There's some more examples in the playbook that you can go through and find. Um, but again, to me, this is more of a, and this, since I've ever, since I reduced the playbook, I took some of these, some of these plays out of here. But let me just show you this one. This one here is Denver, okay? So Denver, Usually is really good out of under center, but this is a non-play action version of Denver, okay? And you have the wheel, this time going to the side where the post is. So just something to think about. This is a cover two shot. I can take this a bit, take this shot right here if I like it. I liked it, I took it, okay? If it's covered, but it's really built for more single high safety or quarters coverage. If you don't like the look, just get rid of the ball. I think everybody and their mother is used to running some sort of play where you have a drag coming across the field, which we don't really have a lot in this offense, to be honest with you. There isn't a lot of drags. This is not a drag style offense, okay? It's more of an in and out and a vertical offense, not drags or shallows, as you call them. So you're not going to get a lot of opportunities to throw shallows. So I think this is the best. This is really going to surprise the heck out of people when they see you throwing shallow routes, all right? So... That's pretty much the three concepts, four concepts, really. And from there, you work them off of play action the best way you can. And uh, you're going to see these in every playbook, okay? So even if you're using a stock playbook, um, you're going to see these. And actually, let me go find my sheet. I wrote down the playbooks that I think are good. If you want to use stock with this system. So after I go and find the, the playbook that you can use to start this thing, I'll also put this down there, too. 
Give me one second here. Yeah. So in general, Indy and Philly is like the same offense. Now they have a lot of good levels concepts in there for Madden. I know in real life they're more of a West Coast spread teams, but they do have a lot of good plays that you can work with. So Indy and Philly, stock books. If you want to be a trips team, we can go with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has a lot of good trips formations. If you want to be an under center team and run the ball more from under center and play action, New England has a lot of good for, a lot of good uh, concepts we're going to talk about. And um, if you want to have probably some of the best mixture of plays of under center and gun, um, you know, what, let me go back. That first one that I said, Indian Philly, that's gun. Okay, that's who we're working with the gun. If you really want to be in the gun a lot, if you want to have a good mix, Buffalo and New York has actually a pretty good mix. Okay. And if you want to be a little bit more RPO-ish, uh, Carolina has a little bit more of the RPOs mixed into the concept. So those are the books that I will look at. I'll put them in the description below. You can know that as well. But that's it for this part of the video. Um, take a look at everything. And then the next and pretty much last part of the video, we're going to take a look at the concepts that we're going to set up and run and try to get our best pass versus whatever coverage they're in and try to always be right. Yeah, I think this is... Besides the major uh, levels concept that they run, which is good versus most coverages, this is going to get you to probably really take your game to the next level in this last part. All right. Uh, guys on Patreon, I'm going to get you that video definitely tomorrow. YouTube, expect it probably on Monday or Tuesday after the Super Bowl. Um, and we'll go from there. All right. I'll talk to you later, man. Peace.